What's up, 12s? It's your boy Brandon Michael here, or the Hawkcast, depends where you find me. And guys, I'm here today with not the greatest of news, but some news that needs to be discussed because it ultimately plays a huge factor in how the end of the season could end up playing out. And I've, obviously, I don't have any Seahawks gear on because I wasn't expecting to make this video, but I did want to come on and address some of these things, actually two big things. I don't want to go into all the injuries or this and that. I just want to go ahead and discuss two major things that happened over the last couple of days and just give kind of my insight, kind of what I think about the situations and what maybe we can do about it. And those two things are number one, uh, Josh Gordon has been suspended once again for violating some type of sus uh, substance abuse or whatever. Like maybe we don't really know the details on it, whether he did it again or maybe he didn't do something that he was supposed to do in terms of recovery wise on what the NFL wanted him to do. Maybe the NFL wanted him to do maybe 30 hours of, of therapy or whatever and he just didn't complete it. Or, or maybe he literally just went back to doing you know, so drugs again or, or marijuana or whatever, which I'm not here to speculate on that. That's that man's business. I, I wish him the best. Honestly, that's one of the things I wanted to touch on because, I mean, Josh Gordon is, is not going to be playing week 16 for sure. And, and maybe for the rest of his career, we probably won't even see him on the field again if this ends up, you know, up, uh, being upheld from the NFL, which is tough because obviously – Forget the football side because it sucks. Yeah, you know, we were hoping to have Josh Gordon on the field. It's a huge blow to this offense saying that how, how much this offense has been struggling over the last few weeks. It's going to suck. We were really excited to have him back on probably the most important game of the year coming up this Sunday against the L.A. Rams. But, you know, tossed out the window. The number one thing is Josh Gordon is going through some stuff that we obviously don't know about. Uh, yes, we could laugh, make jokes, or, you know, you know, you know, say what you know, what the heck's wrong with you? But at the end of the day, we don't know what's going on with Josh Gordon. We don't know. I don't want to make any judgments or anything until we know the full story. I'm not even going to make judgments even after I know the story because that's not man's life. At the end of the day, it's a sickness. Addiction is a sickness. And I mean, you deal with problems your own way. And obviously, Josh Gordon deals with, you know, his problems turning into, you know, that types of t that type of stuff. Excuse me. But I'm not here to judge. Uh, and like I said, I, I really hope Josh gets his life in order. Not because I want to see him, you know, play for us. But just in general, because that just sucks, man. I mean, he's probably left million. I mean, not probably. He's left 30 plus million, 40 plus million dollars on the table by just being suspended. He could have, you know, he's one of the best wide receivers in the game for a while. And he had his life in check. And, you know, it's sad to see a drug or, or something really take over a person's life. I don't want to touch on it too much, but I did want to go ahead and say I really hope the Josh Gordon situation does get improved for his sake. But I'm here to talk about the Seahawks, so that was the one thing I did want to address real quick. And the other big thing that is more pointed towards the Seahawks is the Quentin Dunbar uh, news that his knee surgery will uh, keep him out for the rest of the season. He will be a free agent next year. And this kind of throws a lot of question marks into the uh, in the air. A lot of questions in the air. I'm sorry. Um, I was really hoping to have Quentin Dunbar come out on the field these last few games, hopefully in the playoffs, make a big statement to see if we were going to be able to keep him for next year or not. And obviously him not playing, I don't really see him coming back. It's going to be tough for him, uh, tough for him to come back in the Seahawks uniform. We have a lot of players we have to you know, take care of this offseason. Plus in the future, you know, we have guys that our contracts are expiring in two to three years. So we have to you know, think of that too. Uh, and I, I really want to see Quentin Dunbar come back and play for the Seahawks. But I think also the emergence of DJ Reed and his play level uh, and his level of play, excuse me, increasing every single game. And he's gotten more consistent earlier, in the, you know, with us. He was very inconsistent. He'd make a good play here, but a very, you know, bad play here. He's starting to become more consistent. Had a phenomenal game last week against the New York Jets. Uh, that's the New York Jets. Against the Washington football team, excuse me. I hit myself so hard. Gosh dang it. Um... So that's another thing that's going to play in the factor. The fact that DJ Reed's playing so well, if he continues to play well, we, you know, that's definitely we could see Quinn Dunbar walk out during free agency. And it sucks because coming into the season, our expectation was Quinn Dunbar, Shaquille Griffin, Jamal Adams, Quandre Diggs was going to be our secondary. I think I saw a stat that says together as a group, they only played a little over 70 snaps, which is insane to me. Like we didn't even get to see them all play together for more than two games worth of uh, full of snaps. 
And that just proves, you know, how brutal the NFL is. I mean, Shaq was injured at some point. Jamal was injured at some point. Quentin was injured at some point. Quandre got ejected against the Patriots. Like, there's just that's just how the NFL works. And it sucks. I mean, honestly, it sucks. But that's just the way the game works. And I was super excited about Quentin Dunbar. You know, he we thought he was a steal of a deal. But at the end of the day, it's not looking like it's as, you know... It's uh, that much of a steal at this point anymore because he came to stay on the field for us and he's about to walk, you know, into free agency next year. So it sucks. It sucks. But we take gambles and sometimes they're going to hit and sometimes they don't. And I wish the best for Quentin because obviously, like I said, I'd like to see him in a Seahawks uniform next year. But Chris Carson's hitting for agency. Shaquille Griffin's hitting free agency. KJ Wright is hitting free agency. Puna Ford's hitting free agency. We've got a slew of guys that are all, you know, getting ready to. You know, hit the market, and we're going to have to make decisions, and not everyone's going to make the team. Shaquille Griffin's play towards the end of this year, towards these uh, towards these last two weeks, and plus the playoffs, hopefully more than one playoff game, will show if we're going to be able to keep him and how much money he's going to be. So, it's the NFL, man. We lose players, we gain players, and right now DJ Reed is emerging just as the, uh, just at the right time. Shaquille Griffin had a great game last game, and we need to carry this play over into the playoffs because honestly, if this team doesn't make it to the NFC Championship game, I'm going to be extremely disappointed with our play. Uh, I don't care about injuries. I don't care about any of that. The level of talent we have on this team, we should be an NFC Championship game uh, team at least. So... So that's my opinion, guys. I, like I said, the Quentin Dunbar injury is big, but at the at the, at the same time, I keep stuttering. Uh, he didn't even really play that much this year. So, and when he was on the field healthy, he was amazing. Uh, I'm not gonna say amazing, but he was good. Uh, when he was hurt, like against Buffalo, Lord help me, it wasn't good at all. He was he was atrocious. So it sucks because I think Quentin Dunbar is easily our best cornerback when healthy, but. That's the problem with Quinn Dunbar. It's like, if, what, coulda, shoulda. That's why, you know, Washington was okay with trading him because I don't think he's had a, he's played a full season yet, has he? He's been plagued with injuries his whole career. So you take the gamble with that, but just some players are like that in the NFL. Some players get injured, you know, more easily, easily than others, whether maybe it's the way they prepare themselves in the offseason or it's just genetics. It's just kind of what happens. And Quinn Dunbar, unfortunately, has been hit with that injury bug every single season of every single, you know, year of his career. So, I wish the best for Quentin. I'm not saying Seattle is completely it's ruled out he's not coming back, but if DJ continues to play really well and Shaquille somewhat improves his play towards these last few games of the year, I could definitely see Quentin Dunbar uh, walking. Seattle's not to let, uh, not you know, afraid to let players walk like that, especially with Richard Sherman hitting the market next year. I could see us probably making a push for him too. So we could definitely see you know Quentin Dunbar walking in free agency and Josh Gordon. It sucks, man. I was super excited to see what he could do, um, you know, at that, you know, playoff push at the end of the season. And it's crazy to think about it, sit here and think about it, that we were expecting Philip Dorsett, Josh Gordon, and maybe Antonio Brown to be a Seahawk about three to four months ago. And it's crazy where we're at now. Like, it's so crazy. Like, that's just the flip of the NFL. It's it's crazy. Now we're without Philip Dorsett, we're without Josh Gordon, and, and we're without Antonio Brown. Mind-blowing. And this is the time where we're really going to see DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett have to show up. Demo, show up. Freddie Swain, show up. Penny Hart, you know, hey, you back, you're back. you probably going to come back on the you know active roster, man. All right? For, with these limited amount of snaps, man, so whether it's special teams or not, you know, you better make your mark. And I want to see everybody step up. I want Trey to step up. I want uh, Shaq to step up. I want DJ to step up. Ugo is obviously going to be there. Ryan Neal, all these secondary guys. And... <clears throat> It's playoff time, baby. Uh, this Rams game is a playoff game. I don't care what anyone says. This is a playoff game. And I'm treating it like a playoff game. Win or go home. And let's see what we're made of this Sunday. And I'm super excited, guys. I hope you guys aren't too down with all these injury, you know, injuries and this and that. You know, forget about it. Let's control what we uh, could worry about what we could control and not worry about the things we can't control. Let's keep pounding. We got the Rams this week. Go Hawks, guys. I hope you guys are staying safe. Let's go get this dub this Sunday. And I'll see you guys soon later that was such an awkward outro later guys <laughs>